I am here with a, a very wonderful human being who uh, founded Earth Day in 1970. It's so wonderful to meet you. It's good to meet you, Umbra. I, I wasn't sure you existed. Here I am. How is Earth Day different 39 years later than it was in 1970? Um, People were probably angrier in 1970. It was coming out of the 1960s, which was a decade of the anti-war movement and the civil rights movement, which had both run into brick walls and had gotten enormously frustrated. Today, um, instead of having Richard Nixon in the White House, we've got Obama in the White House, and there's a sense of hope. And it's um, then we talked mostly about the threats, and, and what we mostly sought was for stop, stop polluting the air, stop polluting the water. Now it's, uh, it's on opportunities. How do we come up with things that will cause renewable energy, and in particular solar power, to spread explosively around the planet? Certainly a big part of the initial concern was that breathing the air was like smoking a couple packs of cigarettes a day. But it also has buried in it a concern for things that transcend self-interest. I mean, the Endangered Species Act, I, I, I will never have a relationship with a polar bear or, or, or an orca, uh, but I will fight like crazy to try to preserve them. There is something selfless about that and that I think is, is admirable. Population was a fairly big issue back in 1970, and uh, then the whole thing came back. But people said, well, no, this is an American population issue. In the world, it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. an American consumes as much as 40 Chinese. But we've learned in the last 10 years that that's only true if the Chinese are resolved to remain peasants forever, and they clearly do not. So suddenly, uh, Having a world of eight, nine, ten billion people aspiring toward European lifestyles is pretty formidable. Yes. Yeah, if we all want cars and bread machines. <laughs> yes, those bread messy. machines, yes. So next year is the fortieth anniversary. That's that's a big deal. What do you what do you hope for next year and what do you hope for the future of Earth Day? In nineteen seventy, if you'd said what do you hope for, I guess I would have said the revolutionary transformation of the human prospect. I mean, what did we expect? Well, was something that would have some political activists and hippies and musicians and others forming very large crowds to tell politicians that this is a real issue. What we got was somewhere in between, far more than just a big party, far less than the revolutionary transformation of the human prospect. For 2010, the, the, the hope is that we begin to use social networking skills, organizations like GRIST that are communicating with very broad audiences to create for the first time a, a global consciousness about the environment. Um, you know, we, it, it, it's politically enormously incorrect to be racist or to be sexist or to discriminate on the basis of religion. But borders are different. There's arbitrary lines drawn in the sand. If you're born one inch on one side of the border as opposed to this inch, discrimination is just fine. We're, and, and we've got to get past that because you can't solve problems like climate change or problems of the oceans if, if we view it purely in terms of nationalism. As part of this focus on a green generation, part of that is a genuine generation, younger people, and there, there is a mood of public service that, that harkens back a little bit to the early 1960s that, that led to the Peace Corps. Um, people really seem to want to do something tangible with their hands that leaves something behind. Even recognizing, you know, the, the, the impact of the Clean Air Act is vastly greater than the impact of a million people deciding to drive a, a, a car that is somewhat cleaner. You just have a law and it changes everything. But but people want to do something. And, and by doing something as well, they it's sort of like religion. If you perform a sacrament, you you become more embodied in the religion. So we, we want people to choose something hopefully communal with their families, with their neighborhoods, with their towns, uh, but some project that is meaningful and, and commit to getting it done over the course of the next year. And then of course, have the finale or else just do the whole thing on, on the weekend before Earth Day. Well, we are out of time, but it was so wonderful to meet you. Thank yeah. you so much and happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, Umbra.